Assalamualaikum and good evening everyone. I hope all of us are in good health. Please wear your mask and stay safe everyone. Today we are having a big event. We are going to launch our new educational kit named EduBeat and certification program for STEAM education. I'm so excited. What about you guys? And Idris, what do you think? Ya yeah, betul tu Suat. Kita akan lancarkan uh, produk terbaru daripada Cytron Technologies iaitu EduBeat training and project kit yang berasaskan pada platform Microbit. Okey, pada masa yang sama juga kita akan lancarkan program pensijilan untuk pendidikan STEAM. Okey, dulu sebelum ni mungkin kita selalu dengar STEM kan? Yang ni dah ada tambah huruf A lah, art. Jadikan bunyi dia STEAM. Okey, uh, saya pasti kebanyakannya daripada anda mungkin dah pernah gunakan Microbit. Uh, mungkin uh, dah familiar dengan Microbit, dah pernah dengar uh, dan Uh, untuk makluman, kita dah postkan video-video berkenaan dengan Edubit ini di YouTube channel Cytron dan pada anda yang dah tonton video tu mungkin sedikit sebanyak ada dapat gambaran lah apa produk tu tawarkan apa yang anda boleh dapat dengan memiliki sebuah uh, produk Edubit ini Okey, sebelum tu sempena dengan um, bulan kebangsaan dan juga jalur gemilang so apa kata kita sama-sama menyanyikan lagu negaraku yang diiringi dengan melodi daripada Edubit. Ha, special sikit eh. Ini melodi dia daripada Edubit sendiri. Jadi uh, saya minta uh, jasa baik daripada semua viewers mungkin boleh berikan penghormatan kepada lagu negaraku boleh berdiri dan kalau boleh nyanyi sekali. Okey. Wow, wow. I never thought that Edubit can play our national anthem. It's just so amazing. I thought it just can do an electronic projects. Okay, by the way, we are so lucky today as Cytron CEO, Mr. Tan Eng Tong is here with us today. And we are honored to have three special guests joining us for the live event this evening. Mr. Waris Chandra, Head of Asia at Microbit Edu Educational Foundation. Dr. Sumitra Nair, Vice President of Malaysian Digital Economic Corporation, MDEC, and Dr. Tang, Head of School Engineering, Asia Pacific University. Please give them a big applause. 
So what's your thought on Adobe? Let us know. Just leave your comment and feedback at the live chat. Our team will read and respond to it. Okay, just okay, leave cuba your respond. comment. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cuba tulis uh, comment dekat, kalau Facebook, uh, boleh tulis comment, ada ruangan comment tu. And then untuk YouTube, boleh tuliskan di ruangan live chat. Kalau anda gunakan komputer ataupun laptop, ada dekat sebelah kanan tu. Eh. Boleh tulis uh, comment dekat situ. Kalau gunakan handphone, mungkin kena tekan button chat. Oh, dia ada macam chat, boleh boleh chat dekat situ. Okay, tuliskan komen anda, cadangan ke ataupun apa-apa pendapat anda sepanjang live inilah. Okay, pastikan anda ikuti sesi live ni sampai habis sebab kita ada sediakan hadiah. Okay, hadiah istimewa untuk anda-anda yang bertuah. Okay, apa hadiah dia? Ada siapa boleh teka tak? Hadiah dia apa? Okay, kita ada sediakan <coughs> Adobeat ni sendiri. Okay, ada 10 set Adobeat untuk diberikan kepada 10 pemenang yang bertuah. Okay. Yes, we got a quiz at the end of this event. So make sure you guys stay tuned and join the quiz and be the lucky winner. Okay, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, now I would like to invite Mr. Tan Eng Tong, CEO of Citron Technologies, to deliver the opening speech and officiate the Edubit and Certification Program for STEAM Education Launching Ceremony. Please welcome. Thank you, Dr. Sumitra. Thank you, Dr. Tang. And thank you, Park Waris, for joining us today. I'm very happy to see we have so many people watching our live right now. Thank you, everyone, for spending your lovely Saturday evening with us watching our product launching of EDU Beat. Our solution for teacher to teach microbit in the classroom. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eng Tong. I am the CEO and co-founder of Citron Technologies. Uh, Mr. Tan, before that, uh, do you want to share your screen? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you, you can share your screen. Okay. So, okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Citron is a technology company located in Penang. We specialize in providing um, beginner-friendly solution for students to learn digital making. In Citron, we have our own design team and production line to produce our own product. We are able to test every single product before we ship out to our customer. This is how we control our product quality. We started Citron in year 2004. It's about 16 years ago. At the time, we only focused in the university and colleges market. We've been producing quite a number of uh, products for the undergrad students, the engineering students to learn robotics and uh, embedded system. More than 1 million bots have been shipped out for the past 16 years. Hundreds of thousands of makers and students are currently using our product. But since year 2012, things started to change when maker movement started to get traction in the US market. We started to receive phone call and email from parents and teachers asking us whether we have solution for the younger age children the primary and the secondary school students. There were not many solutions in the market at that time. You can either go for Lego Mystorm or the product that we designed for the undergrad students, but they are either too expensive or too complex for the younger age children. So internally, we told ourselves that we need to do something to solve this problem. So we started to produce some new products to cattle the younger age children. But from the market response, we know that this is not the solution the markets want. But we didn't stop there. The team continued to work on it until one day, we saw this in Singapore Maker Fair. 
It was in year 2017, if I'm not mistaken. It's a tiny board packed with different kinds of sensors and features to allow students to learn digital making and to build different kinds of projects. We were so excited and we started to promote it in the Malaysia market. But one problem we encountered when we promote this product in the school was the quality of the extra components was not, is not consistent. The cable, the servo motor, the buzzer, it's very hard for our students to hook them up and the teacher end up spending a lot of time troubleshoot the circuit for the students. And some of the teacher also spend quite some time to organize all the components and put them back to the box after the class. We understand the teacher pain point. RBT subject is not the only subject they need to teach. Besides teaching, they also need to spend a lot of time to prepare the material before the class and a lot of admin works are waiting for them. Most of them are overloaded. So when we design this product, we are not only design the electronics part, we are not only design the circuit board, we are putting a lot of uh, time and energy to design the curriculum, the lesson plan, and also the material that you need to run the activity in the classroom. I was so excited when I saw the prototype for the first time. Everything was perfectly designed and every detail was well taken care of. But Shadow told me, no, not yet. There's still a missing piece. I was not sure what is it. Until two weeks later, she came back to me and said, we are ready to go. Last year, we signed an MOU with Asia Pacific University to continue our collaboration to promote STEM education. Following that, the School of Engineering of APU has reviewed our curriculum and content for EDUBIT course. In other words, students who complete the course will receive a certificate with APU endorsement. I'm sure this will be a strong encouragement and affirmation to our students. Thank you again, APU, and thank you, Dr. Tang, for this recognition. Besides the certification, I also understand that the Rero EDU team will be conducting free train the trainer webinar for school teacher for this coming holiday. This is the extent of our commitment to equip and empower the school teacher by providing free training and certify them so that they in turn can pass on the knowledge and skills to their students. I also would like to take this opportunity to express our utmost gratitude to a team of teachers who volunteer to translate EDU bit book to the kids' mother tongues. Terima kasih Cikgu Arifin, Cikgu Adrian, Cikgu Fadil, Cikgu Afik, and Cikgu Lee for your time and effort. The Malay version is now ready to download. Tamil and Chinese version are still in progress. In short, what we are doing today has not much different from what we wanted to achieve 16 years ago. We want to make digital making accessible and affordable for our young generation. We want to see them to become the next digital innovator instead of just a tech consumer. I hope we are moving towards the right track. Without further delay, it is with great pleasure that I launched EDUBIT and certification program for STEAM education. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Adam. I'm Anna. And this is Diggy. We are here to cheer you on. It's to learn coding bit by bit. To get started, get yourself an edu bit. Follow the step-by-step -step guide. Remember, read the tips and notes. Then, then do, do the, the challenge. challenge. Have fun playing and exploring. Click this button to take the chapter quiz. Ta-da! You have completed your first lesson. And earn your first digital badge. Collect all 11 badges. To get the course completion certificate, you need to build and share your own project and pass an online theory quiz. When you're ready, Click this button to submit details of your project and take the quiz. Successful candidates will receive an insert. Woohoo! Congratulations! Okey, baik. Jadi dengan pelancaran sebentar tadi, maka dengan ini anda sudah boleh memiliki produk Adobe dengan harga promosi. Okey, untuk first batch kita ada peruntukkan 50 pieces uh, dengan harga diskaun sebanyak 50%. Okey, kemudian 50 set seterusnya ditawarkan pada harga 40% diskaun dan last adalah lagi 50 set Uh, dengan diskaun sebanyak 30%. Okey, jap saya cuba share tengok dah boleh kita dah boleh access tak. <coughs> Okey, dah boleh dah nampak tu. Saya dah refresh. Okey, sini dah boleh add to cart. Okey, sebelum ni notify me kan. Nah, sekarang dah boleh add to cart. So, harga sekarang adalah RM109.50. 50% diskaun. Harga asal adalah RM219. Jadi um, Jangan lepaskan peluang ni, okay? Terus dapatkan. Okay, untuk nak nak senang, anda boleh terus uh, layari product page. Kita ada share link dia dekat uh, ruangan description yang disediakan di bawah. Okay. So everyone, don't wait anymore. Visit our website and order now. We offer you at a bit at special price, 50% discount. This is not everyday discount. This is the time. So get yours now. 50% discount for the first 50 sets. 40% discount for the next 50 sets and 30% discount for the following 50 sets. But that's not the end of it. You have a chance to have it free. We have 
10 sets to be given away when you answer the quiz at the end of this event. We got 10 questions, so stay tuned and be ready. Okay, jangan risaulah. Soalan quiz tu mudah je, tak susah pun. Okay, ia berdasarkan pada produk Edubix tu sendiri dan juga ada sikit yang kita ambil uh, sepanjang sesi live ni lah. So, stay focus. Uh, jangan jangan miss apa-apa live ni. Follow sampai habis. Okay. Jadi kalau macam dekat product page ni, pergi dekat product page ni, uh, kat bawah ni ada description dia kan. Uh, bolehlah baca-baca sikit uh, the spec dia, apa yang ada kat dalam uh, buku ni, apa yang ada kat dalam kotak Adobe tu sendiri. Okay. Jadi manalah tahu anda adalah salah seorang pemenang yang bertuah tu. Okay. Teruskan fokus baca dan juga live ni fokus. Okay. Um, untuk agenda yang seterusnya, uh, saya akan serahkan kepada uh, Puan Cheryl sebagai moderator untuk sesi panel discussion. Okay, uh, dipersilakan Puan Cheryl. Hello, thank you Idris, thank you Suat. Okay, a very good evening to all our viewers today. We are very honoured indeed to have three very special guests joining us for today's event. Okay, with us today, we have Inchet Waris. Hi, Inchet Waris. Okay. Inchet Waris is the head of Asia with Microbit Educational Foundation. He has been to Malaysia several times over the past few years, bringing Microbit. We love Microbit. Inchet Waris, thanks for bringing it to Malaysia. Okay, and we also have Dr. Sumitra Nair with us. Dr. Sumitra is the Vice President of MDEC, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation. And Dr. Sumitra and her team has been going all out, championing our young people and spearheading this My Digital Maker movement with one M, which is to prepare to future-proof our young people for the challenges of the future workplace. And I'll have to say that they are doing a great job indeed. And many of our young people have benefited from their effort. Thank you, Dr. Sumitra, for joining us this evening. And not forgetting, Dr. Tang Cafe, Professor Dr. Tang is from Asia Pacific University. He is the head of engineering uh, school in APU. And um, we are very happy that uh, APU has been uh, collaborating, working alongside with us. Actually, we see a partnership, um, the Ministry of Education, we have MDAC, we have uh, uh, universities such as uh, APU and also Citron. And together, we are working very hard to prepare our young people. We are introducing robotics and coding to them and getting them excited and equipping them. So uh, today we are going to talk about digital coding, digital making and coding education in Malaysia and the whole world. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I'd like to pass the time to Inchet Waris to tell us a little bit about the story of Microbit and maybe bring us some updates from the foundation. Over to you, Inchet Waris. Terima kasih uh, Puan uh, Cheryl, uh, salam sejahtera untuk teman-teman uh, yang berada di Malaysia, Indonesia. Good evening, good morning and good afternoon to friends <laughs> around the world. My name is Waris Kendra. I'm sure some of you are familiar with me and I represent Microbit Education and Foundation in Asia. I'm delighted to join this session and um, what a great um, product um, to complement our ecosystem in Malaysia, Edubit. Um, you know, in this session, I, I would like to share with you about our works uh, with Malaysia ecosystem partners and probably some introduction again to our Microbe Education Foundation. So, as you may be aware of, um, the Microbe Education Foundation is not for profit organization. We were established with the support of our founding partners, including the BBC in September 2016. So, not a surprise when. Um, and it done um, so microbit in Singapore back in 2017. Um, the foundation is UK based and we think that physical computing are key for broadening participation, keeping children engaged, getting hands on the technology and allowing them to be immersed in real world context and solution. And especially at a time like this, the microbit is small, it's cool, it's easy for children everywhere. 
to get their hands on and take first steps uh, with coding. But our mission is not to make all children become coders. We would like them to become digitally creative in the future. So our development, future development involves building and supporting more communities of educators and partners to continue and to continue to remove the barriers to learning digital skills. So right now we are in over 60 countries, around 5 million microbit in circulation and about uh, 20 million children impacted so far. And as delivery partners around the world, we have over 200 delivery partners. So there are a few ways to program using Microbit. Um, these are all free platform. Uh, you can use uh, MakeCode, um, Python, and also connecting the digital world via Scratch. So um, something that's really easy to remember about Microbit, we are incredibly easy, uh, requires almost no technical skills, and just a couple of minutes to get started, but it has limited, limitless possibilities even for the most technical makers. It is affordable for less than the price of a t-shirt or a whole school set for the price of a cheap laptop. Um, again, we're a nonprofit. So by using Microbit, you're assisting the foundation in helping us to improve digital education for everyone. And you can join our community to help out as well. And we're low floor, high ceiling. Um, Microbit could be used to collect data, um, even just using the simulator, there are many lessons that could be used uh, freely and they are all available online. So um, Microbit is an ubiquitous worldwide education tool. And together with you, we hope to have 100 million students learning digital skills with Microbit by 2025. So in Malaysia, we've started since 2017, actually, Antik Tan. Um, so ma many Malaysia teachers and students have started using Microbit. We have a lot of local partners who work together and of course, with the never failing support from MDAC, uh, Dr. Sumitra is here, um, Pasatu and Guru STEM, um, you know, everybody just joining hand in hand to make sure that um, it is being implemented successfully. So we conducted activities after activities, events after events, never, you know, we, 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 we don't feel tired at all. And of course, for the past uh, five months, a lot of activities are stopped, but a lot of remote learning activities actually happen through webinars, microbit classroom, resources being written, and new accessories like Adobe were developed. So um, without further ado, um, hopefully we'll also be joining the My Digital Maker virtual fair, which is gonna happen in October. And we do hope for support as well. And in the next coming months, when students are back to school, hopefully many more teachers, students are even more ready for digital transformation. And we welcome you to join our Do Your Bit Global Challenge competition. And by the way, do you know that last year's runner-up team is from Malaysia? With their Aqua, Cre Aqua Green project, they became one of the eight winner teams from the world. So, um, Yes, uh, keep coding, keep making, and make sure we'll keep sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Inget Waris. Indeed, we are very fortunate to be part of this ecosystem, this global movement to introduce computer science to younger children. And now let's bring it back home. We zoom into Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Sumitra Nai is going to share with us the latest news uh, what MDEC is doing to make sure Malaysia is right on track. Over to you, Dr. Sumitra. Thank you. Can you hear me and can you see my screen, my slide? Yes, yes, Wonderful. loud and clear. Let me see if I can. All right. Okay. It's, uh, I think, first of all, thank you so much to Citron for inviting me to, to, to be here on this very, very special evening for all of you and for all the teachers and students who are, who are watching this tonight. Uh, I also want to congratulate the Citron team uh, for coming up with yet another great product that uh, I think is going to be a great addition to 
the ecosystem that we are slowly but surely building here in Malaysia. Yeah, my name is Sumitra and I'm from MDEC. And one of the big initiatives we have uh, from MDEC with our partners, and I think tonight is a perfect example of what uh, you know we mean when we talk about the movement, my digital maker movement. Uh, because what you see is the coming together of various parties, the universities, the, the uh, private sector, uh, not-for-profit, uh, government agencies like us, and of course all of you, uh, children as well as teachers from, from, who are watching at home. Uh, and this is what the movement's about. And, and, and what we want to do with this movement is to create a nation of digital makers. So again, congratulations uh, to the team for coming up with the product, this great product. Uh, so for those of you who may not be familiar, MDEC, Malaysia Digital Economy Corporation, has been around for more than 20 years. And we do more than just my digital maker movement. Actually, there are three big things that we do at MDEC. The first one is to make sure that we have digitally skilled Malaysians. This is really important because before we can have a digital economy, we must have the right kind of talent and the right kind of skill sets. And my Digital Maker Movement is a very integral part of what we do uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, nurturing digitally skilled Malaysians. But we also do other things, like for example, uh, we, we also work with uh, SMEs to help them in their digital transformation journey, and this is to make sure they're digitally powered. Yeah. And the third is we are also an investment promotion agency, which means that we help to facilitate investments that are digital technology related, uh, whether it is foreign investments or local investments. So these are the three big things that we do at MDEC. Now, specifically, let me just zoom in to uh, what we do for, for schools. Yeah, And this is something we deploy through the My Digital Maker movement, which has been around since 2016. Uh, and it's really a public-private academia collaboration, exactly as what you're seeing tonight, this evening. Uh, and what we do is we do two things. Number one is we work closely with the Ministry of Education to support the Ministry of Education as they integrate computational thinking and computer science and coding and all of that into the national school curriculum. Uh, and, and this has been uh, rolled out in Malaysia starting 2017 in the National School Curriculum. So MDEC helps to write or rather co-author teaching modules that support teachers, um, helps to train trainers yeah, around the country who then uh, go on to train teachers and so on. But we also do something else which is really, really interesting. And this is this is the kind of stuff that where we actually see a lot of um, amazing superstars emerging. And this is when we partner with industry partners like Cytron and Academia like APU uh, to work together to nurture and groom talented young Malaysians to become future digital innovators. Because there are some kids, in fact, not some, but many kids, like the one that Waris just talked about, uh, the first runners up, for example, uh, from the uh, competition last year and, and others. And there are hundreds of other uh, Malaysian children out there who are really, really talented. Uh, and we want to support that. And we do that by working together with industry and with academia. And so if you see, look at the slide, you know, we've got tons of initiatives that we've launched since 2016. Uh, and to date, we've impacted more than 1.3 million school children around the country. And we hope to do more because there's five million school children. So we're we're getting there, but yeah, it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot of collaboration like what we have today. But let me just let me just summarize, yeah, because we've structured it so that hopefully you can take away some of the initiatives that uh, you can participate in. So if you're a teacher, uh, you know, take a snapshot of this because um, what we are showing you here. Uh, centers where we've already trained the lecturers to teach teachers like you uh, on how to uh, continue to improve your coding skills and your uh, digital creative skills and so on. And you can find them in 12 public universities as well as 27 uh, Institute Pendidikan Guru around the country, yeah, including Sabah Sarawak. So, so these are, these are ways in which we are trying to scale 
the knowledge and the skill sets that teachers need so that they can they can then teach uh, their children, their students. Uh, if you're also a teacher and you, know, you don't want to attend those training, then maybe what you might want to do is uh, take, again, if you refer to these websites down there that you see at the bottom of the screen, these are where we have, uh, actually, you can access teaching modules, yeah? Right from uh, whether it's year one, all the way to form five, all the way to SPM level, yeah? And uh, these are lesson plans that you can integrate into your classroom. Uh, and we also now have video tutorials. Uh, this is something we are doing with uh, Arus Academy as well as other partners as we move forward. Uh, and again, they, you, you can download them. They are on our YouTube, right? And so you can just watch them whenever you want to and you can repeat. And you can even show them to your students in, in class if you wish. Yeah? They have video, video tutorials, so they're structured week by week for you to, to share. Uh, we also have, you know, if you're interested in bringing this to your schools, uh, you can set up a digital maker club and uh, you can get access to all these modules which teach you uh, and your children the, their lesson plans on how do you actually create digital maker project, yeah? whether it's robotics or software or applications uh, or even as simple as videography and photography. So there are modules there. Uh, we've now also added something on animation. Uh, so do check out the, the links and you can download those uh, modules. And if you're a career counselor wondering, you know, how do you guide your students uh, on what is coming in terms of future jobs? We've actually got a platform for digital counselors. It's the digital counselor platform. And this is where you can actually connect with industry mentors and mentors from university who can uh, talk to you or share with you resources about what are the future jobs, yeah? Because we want to prepare our children for these future jobs, but often sometimes you've never heard of it, like cybersecurity specialist or AI engineers or whatever, whatever, right? And you don't even know what that means. So if you go to this platform uh, and if you access it and become a member, you'll actually start to get access to lots of resources and events uh, that we do. And now with COVID, we're doing them online. So you can watch from anywhere. Uh, and if you're students, right, or if you're parents watching, uh, do check this out because we actually have beyond what is in schools because we understand some schools there are some, uh, perhaps, you know, you have limitations in terms of the equipment and so on and so forth, or even uh, teachers who are able to guide you. Uh, don't worry, because what we've done is we've actually identified centers around the country there are 56 at the moment we've identified, we have reviewed, we have verified. And if you go to any of these centers, um, you can actually take classes, yeah? whether it's coding or 3D printing, yeah? whatever classes that they offer there, you can actually take them and you can further uh, hone your digital creativity and innovation skills. Very, very new. Uh, Cheryl, you asked about what's the latest. The latest is what you see on the right side of the screen. And that's the Teen Tech Prize 2020. And this is uh, something that's not to be missed. We are trying this out for the first time this year. Uh, and there's actually a grant for you to go all the way and uh, develop a prototype that uh, hopefully might even be able to uh, have the potential to be commercialized yeah, or even registered uh, in terms of your IP. So if you've not already heard about it, yeah, again, just go to the link. We have a registration deadline coming up. Uh, so, so we hope that, that, uh, that you'll all take the opportunity to participate. There is a winning prize of uh, 10,000 ringgit. Yeah, wow. For the winning team. Yeah. So, so we're really serious. We want to find that next young, amazing, uh, young innovator in Malaysia. So do check it out. And of course, yeah, as uh, Waris has already mentioned, we are continuing with the My Digital Maker Fair this year. But given our current situation, we're going to be doing it online. So this is going to be really exciting. We've got some really, really exciting virtual expos and, uh, and experiential um, activities for you. Yeah, so we hope that everybody will join. Do uh, follow. Yeah, do follow us and do visit the website for updates. 
Uh, and we've got, we are on all kinds of social media platforms. One thing we've realized with uh, COVID is suddenly everybody is interested in digital education. And so we've seen a marked increase in the following of all our social media platforms. And if you're not already following us, do follow us. We continue to update them actively yeah, of uh, all the different activities and resources that are available. So with that, uh, that's that's the end of my slides. And uh, if you're not already following My Digital Maker or MDEC, please do, because uh, we're an organization, I can tell you, that is uh, constantly uh, putting out new programs, new initiatives, and hopefully that will be of some use to all of you. Again, Cytron, congratulations. Wonderful to be doing this tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sumitra, and wow, 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 a lot in stock for everyone, from parents to teachers to students. So don't miss any. Sign up, follow their social media to get the latest news, okay? And we have from Microbit to MDEC, and now we are going to uh, invite Dr. Tang to share with us what are some of the courses that our students can pursue after SPM, STPM, uh, you are at the tertiary level. And uh, for information, uh, APU is one of the uh, premier digital tech institutions in Malaysia. So they are championing uh, digital making. And yeah, I'll leave it to Dr. Tang to tell us more about this. Dr. Tang, over to you. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Cheryl. Uh, I hope that everyone can see the screen now. Um, yes. uh, on behalf of Asia Pacific mm -hmm. University of Technology Innovation, I would like to congratulate uh, Cytron for launching the EduBit uh, program. Because uh, for the university point of view, this is exactly the program we need to grow student interest uh, from young age at the STEAM education so that uh, we can have talent and also uh, future students right, for the courses in engineering, in technology and computing. So really uh, congratulate uh, Cytron for achieving that. Like uh, also what Mr. Tan mentioned, uh, APU is also one of the organization that officially endorse the uh, EduBit uh, program that uh, Citron is conducting. So uh, for those of you that is not familiar with the university, uh, Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation is one of the premier digital tech university uh, awarded by MDEC. And our task is to produce the digital talent uh, for the future career, like what Dr. Sumitra mentioned just now. We are also one of the five-star uh, university, and we are one of the highest rated uh, emerging university in Malaysia. And the university actually uh, is established in year 1993 as Asia Pacific Institute of IT. And this is actually under an, an initiative by the Malaysian government to grow IT talent. However, since then, since 1994, we have successfully produced 40,000 graduates and with students currently at 12,000 from over 130 countries. So as a university, we are very diverse and very internationalized. And from the root of IT, we have then since to grow on to have courses in computing, technology, engineering, accounting, finance, and many more. So um, why are we at the university level is endorsing uh, Cytron? Because right, uh, if you take a look at the uh, EduBit uh, program and the concepts, the computational thinking concept that 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 is teaching the student, basically the concept is exactly the same as what we taught to student at the university level. Yeah, just that the language that we use is different and is at a higher complexity. So at the university level, uh, there are certain programming languages that student will be uh, connected to. For example, C, C++, Java, Python, MATLAB, even uh, HDL, and many more. So uh, with the skills that uh, that the children is uh, has acquired from year seven plus and beyond, they will find that when they are joining computing uh, or engineering courses at the UNC level, it's easy for them to get adapt to the computational thinking skills required. Apart from that, uh, in order for them to be very successful in their career upon graduation, there are also 12 skills that are required. And I have also highlighted four important skills that is actually essential yeah, uh, for them to be successful in their career. One of it, of course, is problem analysis. 
And again, this can be related to the logical thinking that they can develop by going through uh, coding courses. Of course, the other thing will be design and develop solutions, how they can make use of various different tools and techniques in order for them to construct viable solutions for the given problem. And also uh, by having the coding skill as well, they can also uh, investigate how to actually construct solutions for the given problem and definitely the modern tools usage is there. So you can see, right, for such a young age of seven and above, the children, by going through the EduBit program, they can start to develop those skills and they can further enhance it when they are joining the university and therefore they will have all the essential skills to be very successful uh, as engineers or even IT professionals. So uh, if the children is very interested to further their education in engineering or computing at APU, so what are the courses available? So at APU School of Engineering, we are running five uh, degree program, uh, namely electrical and electronic engineering, telecommunication engineering, mechatronic engineering, computer engineering, and patronum engineering. All the five engineering programs are fully accredited by Board of Engineers Malaysia. So what does it mean is that a point graduation, they can register as a graduate engineer with Board of Engineers Malaysia, and their degree program is also recognized under an international agreement called Washington Accord. And this particular agreement is basically uh, uh, consists of member countries that you can see at the bottom of the slides. We recognize each other qualification. That means that your children can even further their master education in Australia, in UK, or even to register as a graduate engineers in the respective country. And if engineering is not their cup of tea, again, uh, APU is the premier university for computing and technology courses, mm -hmm. just like uh, what Dr. Sumitra Nayo mentioned just now. We have cybersecurity, we have internet of things, uh, artificial intelligence, data analytics, and so on and so forth. And with the skills that they acquire, the computational thinking skills that they acquire since young, they can easily uh, find themselves adapted to the degree level courses at APU. Okay, so uh, these are some of the degree programs that we offer that uh, your children can easily connect to if they are very interested in engineering and computing courses. So uh, that's all from me. And again, I congratulate uh, Cytron for the EDP program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tang, for the sharing. So from here, we can see all different parties coming together and each of us, we have a very important role. And when we come together, we can push forward this initiative. Yeah, so uh, I open the floor for uh, questions from viewers. Do you have any questions uh, for Inchet Waris, for Dr. Sumitra and Dr. Tang? Okay, do you have any questions from the viewers? I forgot to mention earlier, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Sumitra, what Dr. Sumitra, what, what, what do you think of uh, where we are right now with all that uh, MDEC is doing to um, spearhead this movement? Where are we at in the global picture? Are we ready? Thanks, Cheryl. That's a, that's a very hard question to answer. <laughs> But you know what I can say is I, I think we are making progress, good progress. But I do want to caution parents who are on this call or teachers. I think one of the things that worries me is our mathematical abilities. Yeah, uh, in Malaysia, I find that we are losing our mathematical abilities. It's not as strong as what it used to be, and uh, and uh, that frightens me because. A lot of the future in terms of computational thinking, you know, AI, the ability to stand out in a job market will need us to have this problem solving uh, abilities and logical thinking. And a lot of that stems from mathematical abilities. Yeah. And what is also worrying is the low take up of things like additional mathematics for SPM level. Right. This is really, really important. It's not just about the subject but it's the, what it does, and it actually builds your logical thinking. 
it builds your resilience yeah to do uh, to go through difficult challenges and to persevere and to problem solve uh, i find that part is something which perhaps is not as strong as where we would like it to be so uh, yes you know there's a lot of grassroots activities which all of us are doing and that's great to get kids interested but we must remember that the fundamentals are e equally important and math uh, plays a huge role in that and i hope we'll all remember that and we'll encourage our kids to continue to find ways for them to love maths and to problem solve Yes, that's a very good reminder for myself as well. So I need to focus, remember to do that with my son, seven year old, primary one. So it's need to get the foundation right. Yes. Uh, what about you, Dr. Tang? What, what did you see, you know, at the university level, the um, students' choice of courses and the student intake? Yeah, uh, just to highlight to Dr. Sumitra or Cyril that I actually love maths, right? Me you too. To love, you really have to love maths in order to join engineering or technology-based courses. And um, definitely um, uh, what we see at the university level, uh, we are trying very hard to embed uh, problem solving and logical thinking as well in our students. So therefore at university level, we have a lot of case studies or assignment that is what we call open-ended. There's no mm -hmm. single solution to the assignment. We encourage students to explore, to use different tools and techniques. Yeah, and also uh, we even have a 10% marks awarded for innovation, yeah, for students to think out of the box to see how they can actually have a different kind of solution for the given problem. So uh, what do we see recently at the UNC level? Uh, definitely in terms of computing and technology courses, we see a lot of uptake in terms of uh, cybersecurity, in terms of AI, IoT, and, and data analytics. Yeah? And, and in terms of engineering, we see a very uh, sharp increase in terms of mechatronic and also computer engineering. I think this is actually in line with the awareness of the uh, important pillars of Industry 4.0. So I think parents also realize that these are the future skills required. And therefore, you know, we see a very good increase in terms of number of students for that. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So I also, sorry, I just want to add APU yes. is actually one of our premier digital tech institutions. And for good reason, right? As uh, you heard Dr. Tan saying, I think their techniques are really uh, good in terms of cultivating these students who are problem solvers and they have very high employability rates. So parents who are looking for university for technology programs. Advertise for you a bit, lah, Dr. Tang. <laughs> <That's a good laughs> Do also look at APU because they are one of the eleven uh, premier digital tech yeah. institutions that MDEC right. has recognized. Yeah. Universities that we have recognized. All right, and you. I, I also have to extend our gratitude. APU has been hosting our teacher training, has been hosting our annual competitions, and they are actively engaged in all our you know, efforts. It is a pleasure to work together with APU. Yeah, so thank you, Dr. Tang. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And to all the parents and students, I think we are always open to any activities that can promote STEAM education. I, I believe, I think we share the same uh, vision of having a more talent in this area. Yeah. Uh, Ijet Waris, do you have anything to add to the discussion? How, how is it in the... You, you know, uh, you travel extensively. You have been visiting all these different countries. What What do you see? What's the current trend? Or yeah, any insight for us? I think uh, digital transformation is definitely on the agenda. Uh, with this COVID times, it actually speed up uh, the digital transformation. Um, pri uh, public private partnership uh, very important when it comes to uh, building a very strong ecosystem. Um, I do admire what um, MDEC has done in Malaysia, and I think it could be a good model to replicate in some of the region as well. So I really hope to see the whole initiative uh, um, successful and being very, very sustainable. And I think we, we're just going to achieve that. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, be before we, we end the session, uh, is there anything that uh, you would like uh, to add 
because um, it's getting quite late, 9.25 now, we have another five minutes. Yeah, so maybe any um, message or that you would like to leave with the viewers tonight? Um, maybe we start with uh, Mr. Waris. I've, well, I think uh, the message is um, stay positive. Um, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, um, you know, when we are all back um, to normal or new normal, um, I think the most important element of everything is open-mindedness and collaborative, being collaborative in everything that we do. And with this digital age, um, it is really easy to get uh, all of us into a very collaborative mode, like what we are doing right now, this evening. Yes. And um, Dr. Tan? Uh, I think uh, my message is that uh, try, try to actually learn uh, programming or coding as early as possible, uh, because learning coding is not about typing the codes, right? It's not about able to produce complex codes. It's about computational thinking. It's about logical thinking. It's about the ability to uh, uh, construct and a solution for a given problem. I think with that skills, right, it will actually uh, make you to be very successful in your life, right? Because whenever you see a problem, you will think about all possible solution and also the best solution to a given problem. So I believe that I actually urge all the parents to expose their student to coding as early as possible. Yes, and Dr. Sumitra. Uh, I think, you know, the, the not so great thing about being the last one is <laughs> Waris and Dr. Tan. Is the only but yeah, uh, I think for me, it's, you know, my message would be never stop uh, exploring and never stop learning and encourage your students and children to keep doing that. Give them as many opportunities as they can to explore and learn. Uh, and, um, and and initiatives like what we have today, project-based learning, is definitely the way to go uh, yeah. to cultivate in them. It, it, the learning cannot just be a, by a textbook. It has to be by doing. And, uh, you know, like Edubit and pr uh, products like this, Microbit and so on, allows them to learn by doing. And that is definitely a more effective way to learn. Yeah, compared to doing it just on a textbook. So so do try and explore uh, explore that. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. <laughs> That's you. a good one. You get to do that when you're the last person. <laughs> okay, so um, a very big thank you to Dr. Sumitra, to Inchek Waris and Dr. Tang for joining us this evening. I do apologize that we have to take your time with your family on a Saturday evening. And we really appreciate you uh, joining us and sharing uh, what your various uh, organizations are doing. And indeed, um, let's do more of this. And yeah, before we end, let us get um, Mr. Tang, our CEO, to join us for a group photo. Yeah, he's here. Okay, and uh, Idris and Suat, yeah, can we have can we have a group photo? Okay, ready? Okay. Three, smile, smile. two, yes, yeah, smile. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay. Another, uh, one, one, one more? time, another time. One more, one more. Okay. Uh, I, I think Dr. Sui tries Can showing we do the digital maker. Digital maker. Yes, you need to show us. Yes. Okay. All right. So, okay. Thank okay. you all. Thank you. So with that, I pass the time back to our host for today, uh, Suat and Idris, back to you. Okay. Okay, terima kasih. Terima kasih kepada Puan Cheryl dan juga panel-panel yang, panel-panel uh, VIP yang lain lah yang join tadi. Kita ada Mr. Waris Chandra daripada Microbit Educational Foundation. Kemudian ada Dr. Smitra daripada MDEC dan juga Dr. Tang daripada APU. Saya yakin itu adalah satu perkongsian dan juga satu perbincangan yang sangat baik. Jadi bagi anda yang mengikuti tadi sesi panel discussion tadi, saya rasa uh, anda pun dapat banyak input okay, daripada perkongsian tadi. Okey, sebelum uh, kita teruskan ke sesi seterusnya, saya berminat untuk nak share. Sekarang, okey, kita tengok sikit apa progress. <laughs> okey, 50% diskaun tinggal satu unit saja. Okey, 49 unit dah dah selamat. Okey, dah selamat. 
di order jadi jangan lepaskan peluang ni tinggal satu saja yang 50% selepas ni dia akan tukar ke uh, 40% untuk 50 set lagi ok lepas habis 40% ni uh, last 50 set untuk 30% discount ok jadi sekarang oh, sekarang adalah masa yang ditunggu-tunggu iaitu adalah giveaway quiz ok jadi anda semua dah sedia kalau dah sedia boleh tuliskan uh, di ruangan komen tu tulis ready sedia ok dekat uh, youtube tulis tulis uh, boleh boleh respond ok ready sedia dekat youtube ok kita tunggu dulu we wait for the signal from the viewers ok ada seorang dah reply ok good very good Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So, are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain. I can hear you. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, the most anticipated time has come, quiz time. So, before we start, it is good for all to know the rules and regulation. I'm sorry uh, if you hear a bit noise. There are 10 questions and it is an... Uh, it is an objective type of question. So, next. Each question will get one edu bit. Next. Write a complete answer as following A dot micro bit or B dot Malaysia. Don't put your question. Just uh, put the answer. A dot micro bit or B dot Malaysia. Like that. Okay. Next. Write your answer in the comment or live chat section, okay? Those with correct answer and lucky will be chosen as the winner. Number six, the list of winners will be announced on Monday at Citron Technologies Facebook page. So please make sure that you like and follow our page and check it on Monday to see whether you're lucky or not. And lastly, all judges' decision are final. Okay, ready? Fingers on keypad, take a deep breath. And question number one is, what is the color of Adobe board? What is the color of Adobe board? A, green, B, red, C, purple. So write the correct answer, whether it's A, green, B, red, and C, purple. Okay, hey, have we got the winner? Uh, please wait, yeah. Huh? Okay, <laughs> they have a lot. Okay, so okay. Uh, next question number wait, 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 two. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. I try, try another one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Question number two. Ready? What controller can be used with Adobe? What controller can be used with Adobe? A. Microbit. B. Arduino. C. Raspberry Pi. So I, I can see the answer now. Please make sure that you write the answer with the letter A, B, C and then the answer followed by the answer. Okay, A dot microbit, B dot Arduino, C dot Raspberry Pi.
Oh, okay, okay. A ton of answer. <laughs> Done? Have we got the winner? Uh, wait. <laughs> wait, huh? Too many, too many people. Too answer. many, too many. Okay. Next. Question number three. How many chapters in Edubit book? How many chapters in Edubit book? A, 10 chapters. B, 11 chapters. And C, 12 chapters. Okay. Uh, wait, huh? <laughs> wow, too many. Too many. Okay, okay, okay. Next. Okay, next. Question number four. How many bit modules in Adobe board? How many bit modules in Adobe board? A, seven modules. B, eight modules. C, nine modules. It seems like, like our viewers are ready, well prepared for the questions. Very yeah, good. I can see that so many people answer okay. right. Okay, okay question next. number five. The following are bit module in EduB except A potential bit, B IR bit, C ultrasonic bit. So which one? A, potential B, or B, IRB, or C, ultrasonic B. Okay, next. Okay, next question number six. How many servos and DC motors can Edubit handle at one time? How many servos and DC motors can Edubit handle at one time? A, one servo and one DC motor. B, two servos and one DC motor. C, three servos and two DC motors. This answer is uh, a bit longer, okay? So please write it full.
Okay, have we got the winner? Okay, wait. Uh, wait. Okay. Next. Question seven. Eh. Where's the question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> This kit is suitable for key age A age 7 and plus B age 8 and plus C age 9 and plus so Which one? Didn't see any answer yet Okay, next, okay. question number eight. Question eight, when is the official launching of Adobe? When is the official launching of Adobe? Oh, this is like a straight question. Yeah, okay. the easiest question. <laughs> so A is 1st January 2020, B 15 July 2020, and C 8 August 2020. Okay, uh, second last question. Question nine. Coding and microcontroller programming is now part of the official syllabus for Malaysian schools. Students learn coding in which of the following subject? A, science, B, RBT or design technology, C, mathematics. Have we got the winner? Yes, uh, wait, please wait. Okay, yeah. Okay, lah. last, last. Okay, final question. Last question, question 10. And the question? Adobe course is, uh, is endorsed by which university? Adobe course is endorsed by which university? A, Asia Pacific University, B, University Technology Malaysia, C, University Science Malaysia.
Okay, uh, please wait. And then let's... Okay. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Finish. <laughs> so, um, so we have finished our giveaway quiz. Baik, selesai. Selesai tadi giveaway quiz. Jadi, terima kasih kepada uh, anda semua yang join giveaway quiz tadi. Sepuluh pemenang bertuah kita akan umumkan di Facebook Saitron. Jadi, uh, follow Facebook kita. Pada hari Isnin tu kena check, okay, post. Uh, kita akan umumkan. Dan uh, siapa yang sepuluh pemenang bertuah tu kalau boleh respon cepat sikit lah. Okay, kita pun tak sabar nak uh, hantar hadiah ni. Okay. Dah tak sabar nak post ni untuk anda. Kalau boleh respon cepat sikit. Okay sebelum kita uh, akhiri, sekejap kita check dulu. Last, last kita check. Okay sekarang dah masuk ke 40%. Uh, uh, balance tinggal 46 sets. Okay, jangan lepaskan peluang. Masih ada diskaun lagi. Um, dapatkan. Okay. Dan jangan lupa lah bagi tahu kawan-kawan berkenaan dengan produk Adobe ni dan segera grab. Jangan. Ini susah lah nak dapat diskaun macam ni. Masa masa dia tengah diskaun ni grab. Grab dengan cepat. Anda confirm lah anda tak tak rugi lah. Ada macam-macam dalam tu eh. Okay and then hari Senin tu juga untuk uh, followers setia Cytron Okay, kita ada something yang uh, besar lah. Satu something yang besar, big and crazy lah. So, terus follow untuk dapatkan info-info yang yang uh, semasa daripada Saitron. Okay. Um, saya rasa dah nak habis dah ni. So, Soat. And now, the ceremony has come to its end. Once again, thank you everyone for gracing our ceremony with your presence. Before we end our ceremony, allow us, your MC for the launching ceremony this evening, to recite a few lines of Piotik Malay Pantun to end the ceremony. Banyak keluk kepenarik, keluk tumbuh pohon kuini. Nan elok bawalah balik, nan tak elok tinggalkan di sini. Aduh, ada pantun pula. Okay, okay, okay. Saya jawab, saya jawab. Bunga dedap di atas para anak dusun pasang pelita. Kalau tersilap tutur bicara, jemari disusun. Maaf dipinta. Okay. Hope to see you again next time. Bye and good night. Okay, semula, semoga kita berjumpa lagi. Assalamualaikum dan selamat malam. Bye.